the popularity of the American road trip is back. Definitely a beautiful start to the drive. Getting out of the house and onto the open highway has never been more popular. And for our civilization right now, never more important. It doesn't take long to tell that this is a special drive. For this road trip, we're headed to a California classic, a place where ancient rainforests stretch to the sky and meet a stirring sea. The beaches here are massive compared to Southern California. This is a place where giants grow, home to small seaside towns and a winding highway that passes through a network of national and state parks that preserve these old growth forests and wild seascapes. And this is top shelf attraction anywhere else in the state of California. It's a place that requires no itinerary or detailed plan. Today is the first day the sun's come out in two weeks. All you need is a set of wheels, a full tank of gas or a full charge, and a willingness to explore with impulse as your guide. We would have driven right past this place had we not just, you know, on a whim said, hey, Patrick's Point, that looks cool, let's drive in there. Out here, you never really know what might pop up next. Oh, look at the little, little guys. Baby. Little baby. You guys like carrots? Where is he, way up? Well, you can't see him in there, but there's a little baby black bear cub, which beckons the question, where's the mom? But one thing is for sure, a trip to this remote corner of California is the perfect place for a road trip photo safari. Good job, bud. That looks good. Nice shot. In some of the most stunning forests on Earth. <laughs> Zach's looking for Ewoks back there. You see Zach back there? He's looking for Ewoks. When you travel, the world becomes a smaller place. When you explore with friends that share a love of photography, destinations come to life. This water is emerald green. We tell the stories of travel with our cameras, capturing some of the most beautiful locations on Earth. But every adventure reveals more than what's in the frame. Thunder boomer, as we see him popping up right now. The people, the food, and unexpected turns in the journey. Now they're gonna swim right with us. <laughs> brings the full experience of travel into focus. Outside, Beyond the Lens, brought to you by Visit Fresno County, nature, diversity, found in the heart of California's Central Valley. Stay in Fresno or Clovis and drive to three nearby national parks. By Hedrick Chevrolet, supporting the spirit of travel in each of us. Every journey has a first step. Start your next adventure here. By Fresno Yosemite International Airport, Rediscover your love for travel with more options, more flights, more connecting you to the people and the places you love. And by Visit Yosemite Madera County, California's gateway to Yosemite National Park. Explore the outdoor magic of Madera County and be inspired to discover more. And by viewers like you. morning light in a redwood forest. A setting so naturally perfect, it almost feels like a place you would only find in a dream. The old growth redwood forests of Northern California are another reminder of how diverse this state is when it comes to outdoor beauty. This is the kind of road trip we love, with nonstop views, plenty of places to pull over and explore, and all anchored by unique small towns that add their own charms to a journey we can't wait to begin. We've decided to start our adventure in Arcata, California, working our way up the coast to Crescent City. Along the way, we'll pass through a series of parks that have different names and borders, but all share a continuous stretch of coastal redwoods that rise above a blanket of ferns and moss. 
Arcata is a small town about 280 miles north of San Francisco that sits along a giant inland lagoon not far from the neighboring town of Eureka. Arcata is a quiet coastal town that moves at a pace consistent with the slow retreat of morning fog that is common here in summer. After a nearly seven hour drive from our home base in Central California, we've arrived in Arcata toward the end of the day. The typically stubborn marine layer has cleared, so we head to a nice spot next to Arcata Bay to break out cameras and get them ready for the several days of shooting we have planned ahead. Low tide reveals the shallow bottom of the bay as sunset light works its magic. In what has been a difficult year for travel, simply being outside in a brisk, salty breeze with cameras up and the colors of a summer sunset in frame is a much needed reminder for Zach, David, and myself that life can and will return to normal. With our first day in front of us, the plan is to head north on Highway 101 towards Crescent City, stopping wherever the heck we want. The first place to catch our eye is a giant strand of sand just a few minutes north of Arcata called Clam Beach. Uh, nothing's falling out. It's not like uh, road trip Jenga. So this is a pretty typical thing we do on a road trip like this. Even though the lush rainforests and giant coastal redwoods await us just up the road, we like to try and experience as much of the entire area as we can. While Clam Beach is a lot like most beaches along the entire west coast, it's still part of the photographic story of this place. All right, well, we're at one of the many beaches that Highway 101 travels next to along the north coast here. We're just south of Redwoods National Park, just north of the town of Arcata. And uh, beautiful, foggy, classic Northern California coast morning here. Fog's starting to lift a little bit. The beaches here are massive compared to Southern California. They just go on and on. And there's a lot of folks out here enjoying the cool weather. It's not cold, uh, but it's definitely not the heat of the interior Central Valley of California, which like right now today, I think it's going to be like 102 degrees. This is not that. On a foggy day like today, where the light is flat and the landscapes blend into a monochromatic plate, capturing the scenes that best represent this beach setting can be challenging. Our general rule in these conditions, make your window small. Focus the frame on the extreme details, the things most people don't notice when they come to a sprawling beach like this. I guess it's not really a big surprise, but when you walk on the beach, you can get sand in your shoes, right? Doesn't seem like that big of a deal. I didn't have any problem with my little slip on Zach, put your big boot up here. Zach wears these every time we go somewhere, which I, I win. Every there, time. There's there's a, that's so a big shoe. It's a I lot win. of shoe. I win every time. But Boomer, Boomer, what'd you do? I, apparently, I, uh, I made the wrong choice in footwear today. So. Oh yeah, there's yeah, a little there's bit of sand good, in there. Maybe a half pound of sand. Let's see if that's you know? A little half pound. That's yeah. what I had in each each shoe. It might actually be illegal to try to smuggle that much native sand out of the beaches here. <laughs> Thank you.
Not far up 101 from Clam Beach and Arcata, we make an unplanned stop at a state park that really caught our eye. A place where coastal forests of redwood, hemlock, and spruce meet sheer cliffs and the Pacific Ocean. A place called Patrick's Point. One of the great things about an unplanned stop road trip is you get to just cruise into whatever you think you want to see. And so driving up to 101, I saw the sign that said Patrick's Point State Park. We pulled in here, we paid the eight bucks at the gate, and now we are driving into a park that bills itself as what? The Gem of the Redwoods. The Gem of the Redwoods. What's unique about this part of California, or any place probably in the United States, is that we have a big national park just up the road, and sort of all part of the same experience are these state parks. It's the California State Park that we're in right now. Patrick's Point is actually out this way, so we're gonna take a little lefty here and check out this. It just feels like it's gonna be cool. I, I'm seeing, I just got a glimpse of the ocean down below, guys. It's amazing parking lot area here. We'll get out and check it out. The spot we've parked is just above the point's most noticeable feature, Wedding Rock. Patrick's Point is named after Patrick Beacon, an Irish immigrant who ranched near this area in the late 1800s. A really nice network of trails lead to vista points along this part of the coast with big views of the ocean below. What's great about the northern part of California is you start getting into these, what they're called sea stacks. These rock formations that are sort of, they're kind of separated from the coast and the water kind of works in around them. And you'll see that uh, you can even look out in the distance and you'll, you'll see big giant the tips of the sea stacks. Behind us, Patrick's Point, you can go walk on actually, you can kind of crawl on. But I mean, this is, this is what road trips are all about to me. You know, you're, you're out here, you're not on a time budget, you're not on a clock, you don't have an itinerary, you just have a camera and some good buddies, and you just wanna capture the beauty at your own pace. If you're headed north like we are, Patrick's Point is one of the last places you can easily get close, elevated access to the Pacific Ocean. From here, Highway 101 turns inland a bit as it approaches the main Redwoods parks up the road. But always remember when you're driving in this part of Northern California, watch your speed and keep your eyes on the road. Well, I mean, I guess that's one way to stop traffic is, I can honestly say I've never stopped in the middle of a highway where a herd of elk walked across the road. What you got there, you gonna headbutt me? You guys like carrots? Oh, he's got yeah. Did you just hiss at me? They are beautiful, man. Some of them are in, in velvet coming out of velvet, this big bull right in front of me. That guy's got a couple points. Yeah, no, he's the he's the he's the uh, big daddy of the group. I'm following him around. There, oh look at the little, little guys. Little, little baby. Yeah. Just stopped here while a herd of elk crosses 101 in Redwoods National Park. Should we let these guys go or should we, uh... Oh, don't be honking. Some guy's honking back there, like, get going. There's elk crossing here, man. Not far from our little elk parade near the small town of Oric, it's time to jump off the 101 again and drive into the heart of the Redwoods Park system along the Newton B. Drury Scenic Parkway to explore Prairie Creek Redwoods State Park. This scenic route, which parallels Highway 101 further east, winds through some of the best examples of coastal redwood forests in the area. Nearly 14,000 acres in size, Prairie Creek Redwood State Park is a place to slow down and marvel at the sheer size of some of these trees. There are many places to pull off the road and wander among these giants. All right, so we pulled off the uh, side of the road here in the, on the Drury Scenic Byway, and uh, right away when you get in here, it doesn't take long to tell that this is a special drive. This is, you're seeing the coastal redwoods at their best right now. This place is, I, I, by the way, I can't believe how beautiful the weather is. 
Woods. We spoke to a uh, docent back at uh, the uh, Patrick's Point State Park, and they told us that today is the first day the sun's come out in two weeks. It's been uh, socked in with fog, but right now, you guys, is this not perfect weather? Yeah. This is like nuts. I, I wish television could transmit temperature and smells because uh, while most of the time that might not be a good idea in the battle van, right now, here, walking around on the side of this road in this forest, it's absolutely beautiful. These coastal redwoods, cousins of the giant sequoia that grow in the Sierra Nevada mountains further inland in small groves, are the tallest trees on the planet. Zach's a tall guy. Wave your hand, Zach. Look at that. That's how big these trees are. Many of the trees in this part of the park are over 300 feet tall, with the tallest of the species growing nearly 400 feet and being close to 30 feet around at its base. There is a definite calming effect walking beneath these trees, and I can't help but wonder what this forest looked like almost 2,000 years ago when these redwoods were just emerging from the forest floor. Back on Highway 101, headed north towards Crescent City, California, we crossed the mighty Klamath River. This entire area, including the parks we just passed through, are the ancestral home to the native Yurok people. The Yurok have thrived on this river for centuries, living off the runs of king salmon and steelhead trout that were once abundant in these waters. But hydropower dams upstream changed the flows of the river, shrinking the size of the salmon runs to a fraction of what they once were. But many Yurok still live here and fish the mouth of the Klamath River in summer, honoring the traditions of their past. We've seen what might be a nice spot to look down on the place where the Klamath River meets the ocean on the map and follow a dirt road to a seaside cliff to watch the fishermen in action. But along the way, we have another kind of wildlife surprise. And I was just about to tell Zach to put his camera up because you never know what's gonna come around the corner. We were making jokes about Bigfoot because this is an area where a lot of Bigfoot sightings happen. Yeah, right and, oh, where's the bear? We got a bear. Scoot forward just a little bit. A little bit more. Where is he, way up? Up there. Oh yeah. Hello, black bear. Well, you can't see him in there, but there's a little baby black bear cub, which beckons the question, where's the mom, right? Uh, but this, this, right when we came around the corner, this beautiful little black bear, jet black, Cub kind of lumbered across the road. I'm sorry we couldn't catch it on camera. We yeah, would. I mean, mom was right here. That's a small cub. It's a small cub. We would have actually caught it on camera if Zach would have been rolling. It's just small. It's always Zach. It's always Zach. He's driving too fast. Was I Zach? Was I driving too fast? No, it's you never know. That's the thing with wildlife, too. It's always right when you take the camera, put it away, or right before you think about pulling it up. And in this situation, we got to see the little guy, but uh, not on camera, so we'll keep on trucking. Native Yurok fishermen work to harvest salmon as they leave their time in the ocean behind to return to the river where their lives began and to complete a circle that's always been part of the Klamath.
we're driving on our way we, uh, up to uh, Crescent City, and we saw Paul's famous smoked salmon jerky, and then we found out you're Paul. Yep. So, Paul, how long you been doing this? 22 years this summer. 22 years this summer. 22 years this summer. The salmon are an important part of, like, your whole culture and their way of life, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is. Tell me a little bit about it. Like, you remember fishing as a boy? Oh, yeah. Real young. My uncles, cousins, yeah. everything. Yeah. Now, we saw some guys with the nets out, out there at the mountain mm -hmm. today. Tell me what we saw. What were they doing? They were gill netting, 100 foot nets. You know. All right. Catching king salmon. All right. You're a man of few words. I like that about you, Paul. So. Oh, I can get going. <laughs> I bet you can. You're holding it back for me right now. Yeah. All right, so tell me, how do you do the salmon now? What I see garlic and I got teriyaki. What do you do with this? We smoke it. Actually, he smokes it. Okay, we'll get a shot of him. That's your son? Yeah. What's his name? Mason. Mason, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Any Sasquatch sightings up here? No. Yeah. Yeah. For these guys, probably. Dude, I believe in the Sasquatch. Do you? <laughs> I 100% yeah. do. I 100%. That's good. I want to do a Sasquatch I know a guy that got touched by one in, when he was 15, and he's still... He's still traumatized. He, yeah, he is traumatized. He's, he's literally got touched by a Sasquatch. That's what he said. We don't know how he touched him, but it was a bad <laughs> touch. <laughs> With the day winding down, we make one last stop as we arrive in Crescent City. Road trippers like us enjoying the surf at Crescent Beach. Families building memories they'll share for a lifetime along a drive they'll never forget. The next day, the low morning sun slowly brings Jedediah Smith Redwood State Park to life. And once again, we're lured off the highway and into this dense forest. When I told the guys when we pulled over, I said, hey, let's just jump out and let's just grab. And the squash, we're looking for the squash. We are looking for the squash. Um, I just said, I just want to, on a, on a pullover like this, we just want to jump out of the car. We find a little trail we could use. And um, this is a time for us to get out with cameras and try to just capture some of the detail of the place. You know, like Dave right now is working on a little, a little slider shot with some ferns. And that'll be real nice. And Zach's got his Ronin right here, the, the gimbal. So he's gonna get some cool moving POV shots. And then I've got the GH5 here and it's got a 12 to 100 millimeter lens on it so I can kind of grab all kinds of stuff. So we're just going to each kind of fan out and just kind of grab what we feel, what we see with the cameras to help tell the story of this place. From the window of a moving car, the trees are usually the focal point. But once you get into a forest like this, the detail of what makes up the entire setting begins to stand out. A trail like this, you're always, everybody's always looking up. And there's a good reason, because these redwoods, these coastal redwoods are massive and old, and they draw your attention. But when you stop and look around, you have this clover growing on this fallen coastal redwood. And these little images I like to grab, because they add to the whole visual experience of what you're seeing here, if you kind of just stop and rest and let your eyes sort of wander around. Trees are great, but it's the, it's the harmony of everything here in the forest that makes it what it is. A good road trip for me has always been about escape, a way to leave the world we're tied to behind and to look into the worlds of others and how they live. It's a lesson in contrasts in comparisons, and in discovery. And in a place like Northern California, where the coastal redwoods grow, 
a reconnection to ourselves. Outside Beyond the Lens, brought to you by Visit Fresno County, nature, diversity, found in the heart of California's Central Valley. Stay in Fresno or Clovis and drive to three nearby national parks. By Hedrick Chevrolet, supporting the spirit of travel in each of us. Every journey has a first step. Start your next adventure here. By Fresno Yosemite International Airport, Rediscover your love for travel with more options, more flights, more connecting you to the people and the places you love. And by Visit Yosemite Madera County, California's gateway to Yosemite National Park. Explore the outdoor magic of Madera County and be inspired to discover more. And by viewers like you.